what can you take out of the Collingwood Swans game? Like, is there something that Collingwood did that you spotted? Obviously, you've, you have a pretty good knowledge of them. Um, is there something from that that encourages you about this weekend? Oh, yeah, I mean, they've lost their last three. So, um, yeah, there's clearly t- opposition teams are doing something against them and they're not getting their game fully right. So there's bits and pieces from each game. Um, and like always, we'll look at ways team, teams have scored against them and way teams have defended them, but also yeah, look back at Sydney at their best because they've been a bit unlucky in a couple of games as well in that period. Um, well, not unlucky, but yeah, been close game against GWS where they scored over 100 and lost, so they're doing a bit right. Um, but it's some areas where we, where we feel like we can get them. Is it too much to say that you are trying to play a little bit like Collingwood? Oh, well, we haven't changed our game plan, Barra. No. So um, uh, a lot's get, got made of our ball movement early in the year about our, us being a kick mark team. We haven't played that way for over a year now. <laughs> Didn't play it all last year. Um, haven't played it this year. We were number one for handballs early in the season. High for corridor ball use, high for transition speed. So we've just got a little bit better at finishing off our work at times. Um, not consistent enough, but um, yeah, when we scored at 70% in the first half, going inside 50, which makes your ball movement look a whole lot better. So um, yeah, we haven't, we haven't changed. The Swan seemed to go with a, a lot of kick mark last weekend and, and also last time they played you. Yeah. Is that something that? I guess you're prepared for. for them yeah, we need to keep an eye on that. And, um, you know, the way Hawthorne like to move the ball goes a little bit of a, in some ways, not always, but in some ways goes a little bit of a um, yeah, precursor to what we're going to get this week in terms of being able to shift the ball, change angles, that type of thing. So, yeah, we need to make sure we go through all the phases of our defence. You know, it was disappointing last year when we allowed them to take over 40 marks um, in a quarter of footy, we just didn't adjust quick enough. And yeah, last week they, they did that a little bit. I don't know whether it was just because of Collingwood, but yeah, we need to be ready for that. How do you adjust your defence to, to stop that? Oh, we just need to make sure we go through our phases. Uh, we, last last year, I think we dropped into a zone and defended and guarded grass rather than defending our areas. And we just need to make sure we um, yeah go through our phases of D. So you're, are you saying that you didn't change anything in terms of taking the game on a bit more, you didn't say to the boys, let's try to move it on, let's go through the through the centre rather than going wide or going down the line. It's been as basic as trusting ourselves with ball in hand and, and taking a little bit more time. Early in the year I felt like we were rushing ourselves with in possession and we are putting perceived pressure on ourselves. So what we're trying to do at the moment is just allow our players to play what's in front of them and play with a little bit more freedom, freedom of mind. And... Um, yeah, just trust himself a little bit more like they did all pre-season and yeah, we, we probably just got a little bit caught up in perceived pressure and that caused us to fumble and cough the ball up and we've just been trusting ourselves a little bit more with ball in hand and it's yeah, come out, come out and the way it has. The way you handled Fife, does that mean that he could be the sub again this week? Cause yeah, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the options. We need to make sure he's... Um, he gets through training and his foot pulls up all right and we'll make a call after. But it's always been about making sure we get him back into the team and he stays in the team. We don't want to we don't want to rush anything and have him miss another block. So it's all about getting him con- continuity. It's been a few years since he played at the SCG as a club. But do you feel like you're stepping into a bit of the unknown? Uh, for some it will be. Um, we touched on it in there. It's quite a unique ground. But you know we played at the Gabba a couple of weeks ago, which is similar, even though the SCG is a bit shorter. Uh, it's similar in terms of being a cricket oval, so we've we've had a bit of a look at that type of ground um, in the last three weeks, so, the last couple of weeks. So that'll hold us in good stead. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an unfamiliar environment for a lot of our boys. Um, but we'll we'll be right. A lot of the things you mentioned, though, game style wise, probably really important at a ground like the SCG, taking on the corridor <coughs> and running a bit. Given that it is smaller, is that what you emphasise this week? Uh, yeah, it becomes a bit more of a front half, back half game. So. We need to be able to lock the ball in our front half, and um, yeah, we need to be able to buffer Sydney's pressure in our in our back half. So, yeah, and only in the corridor is something we try and do all the, all the time. So that won't change. Do you take the kids? Uh, I've heard this though. Do you take the kids around the new grounds a bit and show them and talk them through it? Do you do, you do that sort of thing? Yeah, well, we do. Yeah, um, and we try and hit that earlier in the week. So we spoke about it today, and then we'll get there on captain's run and look to do a bit of familiarisation and. Yeah, do a few drills that help help us execute at the grounds. Um, 
Yeah, so we always try and do that. And you show them where the 50 metre line is, all that sort of stuff. Is yeah, well, they can see that. But <laughs> <laughs> they reckon it's 48 metres, not 50. So, um, yeah, we, we talk through that. And, I, and, you know, the fact that, you know, you drive out of the, drive out of the centre bounce, you can get a deep entry and those type of things. Is, yeah, most clubs do that. Do you think the booing thing will have any effect on Sydney? Do you think that might fire them up? Or they get behind, buddy? What do you reckon? Uh, I think they'll be fired up. Well, they've lost three in a row. Um, even though their intent's been really strong the last two weeks, uh, they've lost three in a row. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, we, we both need to win, and they'll. Um, I, I don't think they'll need any more firing up. You've been in the camp earlier this season, where you've had poor former players come back and play against their former club, and you know you sort of said that people can pay their money, they can react how they mm. like. But are some players sort of off limits when it comes to building? Well, I think is we can draw a line. Like, um, you know, it's a bit different lobby coming back to play against or Griff coming back to play against a former club when, yeah, they've walked out the door. I think that's a little bit different. Um, they had a boo a champ when, for no good reason. I think we can draw the line there. Or, you know, a young young player in Horn Francis going to any ground, any opposition ground and, and getting booed by any opposition team, I don't think we need that. And um, I think that, I think that crosses, crosses the line. So I think we can draw a line there. Um, Draw the line at Buddy as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I think we've been through this scenario with Adam Goods, um, and you know how Adam made that, made, made, uh, the booing made Adam feel. Uh, I think we've got to take it into that the, the, the players' welfare into consideration, and um, if they're not seeing it as a bit of fun or a bit of passion, I think you know the, as as fans and supporters of the, the AFL, we need to make sure we um, respect that opinion. The Swans obviously got a lot of good players across their lives, but one player who's been a bit down lately is Tom Papley. We saw him gather around how he can be a match winner. Do you have to put any extra attention into him? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't see him as down on form. Um, he still looks dangerous to me. He's still um, playing with great intensity and um, yeah, he gives them great energy. So yeah, we need to put a bit of time into him. It's not long ago he kicked six. Yeah, so yeah, we'll respect him. His ability though to go into the midfield, start there and then work back to yeah. forward is obviously a unique thing. How do you sort of plan for a goal like that? Yeah, well, it's probably not that unique because a lot of teams are doing it now and uh, he does it as good as as good as good anyone and we, we just need to make sure we get those handovers right and make sure we hand the mid over back to the mid and we um, pick up him coming forward. So we'll, we'll have something in place to do that. You probably came into this season as one of the teams who maybe were considered the hunted after what you did last year. Do you feel mm. like that has sort of shifted at all this year and you can really attack this next three patch of games? Uh, it's a good question. Um, yeah, I, I think we got our mindset right on the weekend. And uh, even though we we're, were probably favourites on the weekend, we played um, on the front foot and played more proactive than we have previously. So, yeah, we can definitely take something from that. Um, and we need to make sure we keep building on that. Do you take the Jackson and Fife had in the midfield on your, your other midfielders? How did you review that, guys like Rayshaw and the, the game that he had with those guys alongside him? Yeah, I think um, pushing Andy out to to become a forward at times gives him a bit more freedom and flexibility as well to, to run um, and, and play on his terms. Um, and I'd, yeah, I just think it throws something a little bit different at the opposition. I mean, Switter went in there for a, a bit as well, and he's a he's a good ground ball player, as are the other two. So, um, just to, to mix it up, different dynamics. Um, yeah, it's, it throws something a little bit different at the opposition, but um, puts some of our strengths around the ball where we've been probably struggling a little bit as well. Is Jackson roaming and, and getting into the midfield something that you want to continue doing? I will keep looking to evolve that. Oh, <laughs> problem is, we need him. Well, not the problem, it's the good problem to have with his flexibility, but he needs to be second ruck. Um, he had an impact as second ruck, and we need his contest down forward and his ability to win contests down forward as well. So just make sure we get that balance right. The we way that Rachel's played the last couple of weeks, is it fair to assume that he's over that, that little niggle that he was uh, No, he's still got to manage it. And, um, yeah, he hasn't been horribly out of form either. No, he's, yeah, he's, he's been building in, across the season and... Yeah, it was probably his most complete performance on the weekend, but he hasn't he hasn't been far away. So, um, yeah, yeah, hopefully he can maintain it. Were you happy with the response from Will Brody and the waffle? Yep, yeah. Both times he's he's been dropped, he's handled it well, and gone back and performed and seen bits of what we want. So, um, 
yeah, his his job is to maintain consistent consistency now. After a good win, though, are you reluctant to make any changes that aren't forced? Yeah, we'll have to go through that. Um, most players are on the list, really, across all um, all three games, perform their roles really well. So, um, you know, if you perform your role in the AFL team, it usually um, means you hold your spot. So we'll work that out later, but yeah, we, we won't be making too many changes.